Howdy do to all of you. This is Emmett Watkins Jr. once again, also known as DJ Spun61 on various platforms and sites around the internet. And I'm here to talk to you today about Little Women, the brand new, well, I guess not brand new now, it came out Christmas Day last year, but the new to me, I guess, uh, movie that came out directed by uh, Greta Gerwig, um, featuring, let me pull up the list, because I always forget how to pronounce her name. Uh, ooh. Sir Sarosi Ronan. Ah, God, I'm probably saying it wrong. But um, the young lady who was in uh, Lady Bird right before this. Um, yeah, I am here to talk about this movie. And yeah, I really was interested in seeing this mainly because I was a big fan of Lady Bird when I saw that for the... I actually watched every single Academy Award nominated movie for, I think, 2018. So that's all the movies that came out in 2017. Um... And so yeah, Lady Bird was one of those. I watched it and I enjoyed it. And there's actually a video of me talking about my experience watching all of those Academy Award nominated movies. Um, that's on my channel earlier. Um, hopefully I remember to link it in the description. If not, it's not that far along. It's actually in the same playlist this video is in. So um, you can go back and look at that if you want to hear my thoughts on Lady Bird. But yeah, because I enjoyed that, I wanted to go ahead and check out Little Women. Now, um, I totally did not read the books. They weren't assigned to us in school or anything. This, Little Women is a book that I've heard is the type of book that gets assigned for you to read in school. Um, but it wasn't assigned for us. We are in the Georgia educational system. And I mean, this is a book from the point of view of the Union and the Civil War. So, you know, probably not going to be on our curriculum. Um, so I didn't read the books. And I know that there's been at least one movie made of Little Women in the past and i didn't watch it either so this is my first time with this story in any form um and i also want to say i feel like there's a chance that this review is going to be a little bit strange um because i mean the movie's called little women and from what i know this whole story because i this isn't my first time hearing about little women it wasn't just in the form of this movie um it's just been what was it there was a this american life episode about little women um where you know this young lady who i, I forget what country she was from but she was from overseas from a place that really had a derogatory view of women and so she read this book at a relatively young age and it kind of blew her mind that women could act or even think this way so I'm aware of, I don't know if it has a legendary status to the women of America in that same way, but I have the perception that it is, and if it doesn't have the influence that I think it does, then it definitely is, it's definitely something that getting remade right now is relevant to today's climate. So <clears throat> I feel weird talking about the movie just for the fact that I'm a black man, <laughs> and this is like, this is not just a feminist movie, this is like very squarely white feminism <laughs> so i feel weird just having anything to say on that because that ain't me and that's not my perspective but you know i enjoyed the film so um hopefully it's not weird to hear me talk about the film and just what i liked about it and what i didn't like about it um hopefully i don't say anything that's gonna you know come off the wrong way or not be taken the way that I'm hoping it's taken. Um, hopefully everything's all good, but in any case, uh, we're, we're here to have fun. And once again, I do overall enjoy the movies and I like a lot of people in it. So without further ado, with that heads up out of the way, I mean, of course, if you don't want to hear what a black dude thinks about little women, then that's fine. Um, I understand that some people don't want to hear certain opinions on art that isn't necessarily for them and i am fully aware i am not the tar i am not the target demographic but um i'm gonna talk about it anyway so yeah let's go ahead and see what's up with little women so um as i said uh i loved uh lady bird back in the day and i was expecting uh this movie to have that pace that i liked in lady bird because lady bird i think it went through the course of like two or three years but it was only in like a what two hour and a half two hour movie um it was like a very quick pace and just like entire sections of her life went by in a blink of an eye but not in a way that made you feel like you missed something it just felt like it was natural it was really cool how it did that and so i was i was expecting that again from greta gutenberg and in some ways she delivers on it and in other ways it took a while for me to 
notice it because the thing about little women is it takes place um there's two con there's two concurrent storylines going so one current day one i guess current storyline for their time period um this book does take place during the civil war as i said um or i guess right at the end um so like we're talking I don't even think it was 1900s. I think it was still 1800s. So long ass time ago. Um, there is one black character in this whole movie. <laughs> I counted, um, unless I missed something from looking away or something. Um, yeah, there was only one, and it's an extra. So you know, th there's not that much in here as far as that goes. But hey, this, this is not what the story is about. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, just I, I was expecting it to have that fast pace. But it took a while for me to recognize that pace or to see it happening because at the start of the movie even though it does have the two concurrent storylines where one's in modern day and then one's like nine years prior and then kind of the modern day continues and then the 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 past one continues all the way up until it's relevant to what's happening in modern day so it's kind of like a something happens and then you think back to the memory and then that memory kind of you jump back from that and it has parallels I'll, I'll explain when i get into spoilers probably or actually i'll explain a little bit more later but just to say the original thing that you know kind of scared me at the beginning of this movie is that it seemed like it was going to be very slow paced and i'm gonna be honest the main reason why I even saw this movie is because I love Greta Gutenberg, because I love uh, Sue. What's her name again? Saro. Man, I am saying it wrong. I know I'm saying it wrong. Sawisi. So I saw. So I want to say Sawasi Ronan, but I know it's probably wrong. God, I wish I could say your name correctly. I'm so sorry, young lady. Uh, damn, she's my age. What the fuck am I doing? Anyway, um, yeah, she uh. I just loved them both so I was excited to see this movie off of that but like historically Victorian or just period piece dramas don't really do much for me um, I remember I saw uh, There Will Be Blood which isn't the same time period at all but just that type of stuff There Will Be Blood didn't hit with me um, didn't hate the movie um, but it just didn't feel I, I enjoyed the climax but it didn't feel like the whole movie preceding that climax was worth it um other movies, I remember Phantom Thread is one of the movies that was nominated for Best Picture the same year that I watched Lady Bird. Phantom, Phantom Thread did not hit at all. I was I was just so bored by that movie. Oh my god. Um, and just other films like that, uh, they just tend to not hit because I don't find enough in there for me to latch on to as far as a concept for me to be into because, you know, a lot of period piece dramas, you thinking about black people, there ain't many periods in the past that we were happy during. So it's kind of hard for me to find something, uh, you know, that I can latch on to in all these movies, largely about white people. Um, so that that's the thing I was concerned about. And when the movie started, it definitely, I definitely had that fear. As soon as I started hearing uh, Miss Ronan, I'm just calling Miss Ronan. She might be my age, but you know, she deserves it. Um, when I started hearing Miss Ronan like speak with the slang that's appropriate to that era, I was like, oh no, this is going to be one of those. Oh lord. And then it was PG as well, so I was like, man, this movie's going to be like, this movie's going to be just soft. I don't know. I just didn't think this movie was going to, when I, in the first couple minutes, I was afraid that the movie was going to be like some hoity-toity is the word I want to use, but I don't even know if that's the complete thing. It just felt like it was just going to be... Like, you know when y'all watch a movie in, in like, college or high school or something, and it's, like, one of those movies that was, like, like, The Crucible. Crucible is a perfect example. Um, we had Winona Ryder and Daniel Day-Lewis. It's like you were watching The Crucible where you're, like, okay, I know film people probably think this is a great movie, but the context in which I'm watching this as, like, a history lesson just makes it feel boring where little women knowing that it's like a world renowned story or at least a countrywide renowned story knowing that status about it and seeing little women out at the initial start i was worried that it was going to be like oh man this just feels like a history lesson of like something that actually happened even though it didn't actually happen but um yeah that's what i was afraid of but by the end of it i was surprised i was like totally caught i was i was in it i was totally caught up in the fates of all the characters i loved all the sisters and timothy smoke 
Timothy Smollett. Oh my God, that is not his name. Let me not disgrace this poor man. Um, Timothy Chal Chalamet. That guy, so great in this role. And I, I realized I really liked the movie for, um, I like how the ending subverted expectations. In some ways, I didn't appreciate how it subverted expectations because in some ways it just, I felt directly called out because my expectation was subverted for the ending and they called me out for wanting that. <laughs> and I was like, damn, y'all right. <laughs> so like, I'll talk about that when we get in the spoiler section. But um, yeah, it's it just, it really kind of messed with you and things go ways you didn't quite expect. Um, once again, never saw Little Women, never read Little Women. So, you know, that hit with me. Um, and I really, I really, really related to um, Miss Ronan and uh, Timothy Chalamet's character. Um, I, I just, I saw myself in them, but in different ways where like the, um, the playfulness of their relationship just in general reminded me of a lot of friends I had growing up and a lot of relationships I had because I was I was probably terrible not terrible I don't know how bad this was but like how I used to do a lot growing up is I'd have a crush on a girl and instead of saying anything I'd just like be funny in their general vicinity they'd notice and then we'd become friends and I'd never say anything about how I felt about them and then we just that would be the entire relationship <laughs> it was pretty terrible or at least i feel terrible now because that's that feels just dumb but then again what am i gonna say life does not work like this movie where people are expressing their love to one another and stuff that is not how the real world the real world works but like that's how i felt with their relationship in this movie where they're just like they're the best of friends been around forever growing up growing up together um, and you know, one of them clearly feels a way about the other and they clearly have this type of relationship. Um, but then uh, I don't want to spoil it. I know this, this story is so old, but I'm not going to spoil it for people who might've been like me and just were not afraid of this or were not aware of how the story goes. Um, but yeah, I totally dug it. Uh, I don't know what else there is to say. Um, I like the movie, man. It, it's a good movie. I will say it did feel, because of that ending, I, here's the thing. I did enjoy the movie. I'm just not feeling hyperbolic about it. Like, it was a good movie. Uh, I, I just don't feel, like, over the moon about it in the same way. I don't know. Because it is, at the end of the day, still period piece. And the fact that it is a period piece doesn't do anything more to, like, make me excited about it. And it's not... Because the movie is so good, it, it's not something that I feel hinders it at all. Um, I was expecting... There's an energy that earlier Greta Gerwig, Gerwig feel, feels. Greta Gerwig's earlier movies. Let me be specific. Lady Bird had an energy to it throughout the whole film that I felt make that, that I feel made that movie exciting to watch, even though it is, you know, it's about a girl in high school. Like you've probably seen plenty of movies like that coming of age stories. Um, and honestly, Little Women in a lot of ways is a coming of age story as well. Their, their age is just a little bit older, but um, the energy in this movie took a little bit to get going. Not saying, like I said, I had those concerns at the beginning of the movie where my, my mind was racing, but about 30, 40 minutes in, I was like, all right, let's go. I'm in it. I like these people. Let's all get there. Um, and I think it's because there wasn't like, I, I feel like at the very beginning, I'm, I feel so bad about comparing all these movies to the last ones because I did that with Bad Boys for Life compared it directly to Bad Boys 2. Same thing for Uncut Gems, compared that to Good Time. Um, and here we are comparing Lady Bird to uh, Little Women where those are completely different beasts. But um, yeah, I, 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 I just had concerns up front about what this movie was going to be. And I feel like that's just because the pace of it was a little bit different. Um, I love Dude, I'm telling you. I will eat up some love triangle romance stuff. I will eat that with a spoon. Give it to me. And I also, I will also eat up some, like, what's her, Miss Ronan. I'm not going to try and say her first name because I'll butcher it. She has a thing recently, like between this and Little Women, and I know she's done other movies since. She has a thing where she just loves to play the, rebe the rebellious adolescent woman. I will eat that shit up. I love that type of stuff. I love those types of characters. I mm, give give me a bigger spoon of that, like straight up. I'm telling you, dog. So yeah, I I really enjoyed that part. 
Um, and overall, just it's 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 good. I don't even want to say anything negative about it. Like I don't have anything negative to say, or I've said plenty negative. I don't have anything extremely negative to say. It's just that what's good about this movie isn't like getting me like super hype, super amped in a way that I feel about you know other films I've seen. I mean, if we look through here while I'm while I'm looking at this, I'm about to look through my other movie and TV reviews to see what I've said about other things, so I can kind of compare myself compare compare how i feel about this movie to another movie that i've talked about on this uh on this youtube channel um okay let's go with wonder woman wonder woman is one of those movies where i had a very strong reaction to it um i i i cried i think i was sobbing at the end of wonder woman i don't know if it was a sob or if it was just a lot of tears but i was really digging wonder woman um and I didn't have that big. Of, oh, I didn't have that big of a reaction to Little Women, but I'm gonna cancel that out immediately because I definitely cried. <laughs> there was like, there was like two parts where I like got got like my eyes got full of water, and then there was one part where I just straight up cried. And we'll talk about that in the in the uh, in the spoiler section. But um, yeah, I I overall. I like the movie. I think it's great. I think it's not just good for women, actually. I think it's a great movie just in general. It's a movie about life. It's a movie about growing up. And it has some really good insights into, you know, how women felt they were treated back in that time. That applied to right now. A lot of women feel the same way as back then. So, yeah, it, it, it's just really good all around. Some really, there's some really pointed dialogue in there um, that I thought was really clever. Um, and once again, the ending, a little bit salty about where I respect how it ended, but it felt, I don't know, it felt like it was calling me out <laughs> in the way that it ended. So I respect the way, I respect that it ended that way, but I wish they just would have gone all the way with it rather than say, hey, you who wanted it something different, fuck you <laughs> for wanting it that way. That's what it felt like at least, so. It is what it is. I, I I can't be too mad about that. Overall, I like the movie. It's, it's a solid. Um, do I like it more than Lady Bird? Nah, I still like Lady Bird more, but I think that's mainly because of its more contemporary setting. And um, yeah, I, I want to see what else Ger Greta Gerwig does. And I gotta look up Miss Ronan to see what other movie she's in, because I really like her. I like her. I like it when she plays these types of roles. So if she's in another movie where she plays this like rambunctious role, even if it's not a teenager, I don't necessarily care about that part. I just like seeing her be like the feisty one. So yeah, really good on that level. And from there, we're gonna get into the spoiler category. So right now, if you don't want to be spoiled on Little Women get the hell out um that was a little bit abrasive but anyway the ending so if you, you've seen the movie if you're sticking around um the so the ending where you know she's running after this boy and then right before she gets to him they they stop and it turns out she's recounting the book to the person she's trying to sell the book to and then he's like oh he doesn't get together with them whatever and she's like Oh, uh, yeah, she doesn't get married. She's been saying the whole book that she doesn't want to get married. She's staying consistent. And I felt so, I felt seen in a bad way. Because <laughs> I was like, but I wanted, because at this point, I've already said how I related to Miss Ronan and Timothy's characters very much. They've both had heartbreak at this point. To the point where I was like, I feel that heartbreak. I feel like when I said I cried earlier and there were two parts where I just like missed it up. And then one part where I straight up dropped tears. The part I straight up dropped tears is when Miss Ronan is like crying and she's like, I'm so sick and tired of women being only associated with their heart, but I'm just so lonely. And I was like, fuck, oh, dude that is me <laughs> i felt like oh my god i felt like her for a second i was like yo um mad respect to that it, it was because i you know I, i'm the nice guy and everything but like shit <laughs> i don't know i don't want to make this a therapy session on a youtube video right now but i just felt really seen by that scene um wow that was a funny thing um so when they when they when they have that scene and i'm already fully on the train of her getting someone to love or more someone to love her i was already on that train then they stop they stop right at the end and say it, it'll only sell if she gets married or if she ends up with someone and i was like yo shit <laughs> like i know i wanted that but like 
damn, I felt like trash. I felt not trash, but like I felt totally like they they knew I wanted that and were like, hey, you shouldn't be wanting that because that's fucking that's how it is. Like this is how the fucking society looks at it. And I was like, yo, they're right. God damn it. <laughs> so I felt super guilty. Like, and there was another like four or five minutes of movies after that, or four or five minutes of the movie after. So I was, I was feeling real guilty. I was like, yo, I really feel just, I feel like the guy she was selling the book to, and the guy she was selling the book to was super, super just not caring about women, you know, just a, not even like aggressively sexist, but being like just sexist enough to where you're like, oh, that guy's fucked up. And so I was just like, man, I'm no better than him. Or at least it felt like that in that initial uh, revelation. But otherwise, I, I like the, uh, I, I, once again, Miss Ronan and Timothy, chemistry, just, I, I did a chef's kiss. Their chemistry is off the chain in this one. It reminded me so much of relationships I've had with uh, some of my other girlfriends from the past. And when I say girlfriends, I mean female friends, because I don't think I've ever, I had a girlfriend for like one month and that's it. Yeah, yeah, I don't think that counts. I'm not counting it. Um, anyway, yeah, uh, so yeah, I, I had never had that, but like, you know, their their friendship was just so authentic. It just, I saw the little like games and shit that I would, I would just run around and just like, just do whatever. And I loved how, I love how Timothy wasn't just in it for uh, Miss Ronan's character. He was cool with all of the sisters. I thought that was the coolest thing, where it's not just him liking her, it's him liking her and being it and being cool with everyone else. I thought that was cool. And like the whole the whole thing with um all right, let me make sure I say her name. Florence Plo. Let's make sure I'm saying it right. I might not even say her name. Florence Pugh. I'm gonna say Florence Pugh, because Pugh at least sounds close to what that looks like, where Sarosi, I don't even know if I'm gonna say it right, but Florence Pugh's character, I really liked, I hated her towards the beginning of the movie, man. I hated her when she started burning uh, uh, Miss Ronan's notes. I was like, burn this bitch to the ground. I was done with her. I was like, how fucking dare you? I was so angry. And then I was like, okay, she's just going to be the villain of the movie. Okay. And then when she like almost drowned in the lake and Miss Ronan felt bad about like wishing ill upon her. I was like, yo, I, I, I was totally hoping they were just going to be, I, I was totally hoping Miss Ronan was going to be mad at her the whole film, but that ended up not being the case. And you know, she had that heart to heart with Laura Dern. Also Laura Dern, great in this movie. Forgot to say that Laura Dern's very great. Um, I just liked her. Um, what's his name? Rob Deerdick? That's not his name. That is not this man's name. The guy from uh, Better Call Saul, he's in this movie. Yeah, oh, Bob Odenkirk. Jesus Christ. Yeah, Bob Odenkirk, yeah, surprise. I didn't even think, uh, I didn't think his character was gonna be in this movie. Um, I thought it was just an all women affair, but you know, turns out towards the end, you find out that, oh, surprise, he made it back for more. Um, didn't think that would be happening at all. I thought it was really cool that almost the entire movie was just, you know, hey, the whole movie is just women and we're all raised in a house of just women. I thought it would have been, it would have been sad if he died at war, but I thought it would have been more thematically appropriate because it is called Little Women and this whole thing is just, you know, it's about the female experience. So having him pop up was a little like, oh, okay. Not disappointing, but just in a way where it's like, oh, okay, so he is here. All right, that's interesting. Um, but I think it was worth it for the scene of them all being happy to see him and stuff. And you can see that, you know, all of their personalities aren't only inspired by Laura Dern's character. It's also, you know, some of him in there as well. So I thought that was a pretty cool thing um, or just an interesting choice. Um, I, I loved a lot of the stuff with, um, I, I want to say, Chris Cooper's character. I, oh man, I'm so bad with these names. Actually, let's pull up the IMDb. Let's stop just reading the Google like suggestions for the cast let's look up these people um let's see lawrence <laughs> mr lawrence is chris cooper's character yeah mr lawrence i loved all of the stuff with him and beth march um i thought that relationship was really cool where you know he lost his daughter early on but then beth reminded him of his daughter and so he had that close bond with her i thought that was really sweet i loved beth i feel so bad about beth man like they really did Beth dirty and you know that's probably how it, that's probably what happened in the book too 
because that feels like a big change otherwise, but damn, that sucks. Beth literally was the best of them. She, she was just quiet, complacent, cared about others more than herself. Like she was the best sister of all of them and she gets the fate that she does. She just straights up, you know, withers away in, in her like mid to early 20s, which just fucking sucked. I hated that. Um, so yeah, I, I was really sad that that happened, but I think the way that she went out was really cool and it had that cinematic parallel. As I was talking about um, how the movie goes back and forth from um, different time periods, I really thought it was cool how the color temperature changes. You could tell if it was a flashback or if it was modern day it by like modern day had like a cooler color palette where the past the, the flashbacks had a warmer color palette so i thought that was really interesting how they did that because at first i didn't notice that's why i was like concerned initially because i was like okay how are we gonna know because they the first time they do a flashback they say seven years earlier and so i'm like okay they're gonna pop that up every time and then you start noticing they come back and they're not doing it every time so i was like Aw, oh, shit, how am I even gonna know what's what? And then, after a while, first you start seeing that, you know, Miss Rohan, Miss Ronan's character wears her hair differently from year to year. So, that's a good way to check, um, and in other ways as well, but it was just, you know, that initially turned me off. But I did like how in that one scene where she gets sick the first time in the flashback, and they're able to nurse her back to health, and it's that scene of, her waking up and she's not in the bed and then she walks away and then goes downstairs and sees her at the kitchen table. I love that scene because as soon as that whole scene was like super happy and everything and it just perfectly matched the scene of it being modern day again and then wakes up, she's not in the bed and she was just sick before the scene of course and she's not in the bed, walks down and sees there's no one at the table next to mom. Oh, broke my fucking heart. That's one of the one I think right there is where I got Misty. I think the parts I got Misty are the part where the sister dies, the part where, um, oh, I think I got, I got Misty at three parts. Um, I got Misty at the part where the sister dies, the part where, um, Timothy Smollett's character, or I guess Theodore Lawrence or Laurie, where his character, um, confesses his love to Joe Marsh. Um, I thought that part was like, fuck. Cause when he was like, Okay, I, I'm sure you will find someone that you love and you will live happily together, and I'll just watch. Bro! Oh! You don't know how many times I've had to just watch in my life. So that shit hit. I was like, yo. <sighs> so yeah, I love that scene, and also the part where um, after uh, after Beth March dies, and uh, Mr. Lawrence is just outside like, I can't go in the house. It doesn't feel the same without her. I was like, that is so sweet. That like... The, this because like you could tell that the way he cared about Beth March wasn't in a creepy old guy way it was in a like I loved her like a daughter way and it just broke my fucking heart that he, he built a connection that strong with her without even being blood related that like got me so that got me deep man that got me right in the soft spot and then as I said you know when 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 Joe Marsh, you know, confesses how lonely she is, despite not wanting, as a woman, not wanting to only be known for her love, just her confessing how lonely she was while trying to keep that fight up, man, that hit me. And I don't know if it hit me just because I am lonely. It might have hit me for some other shit too, but I don't, I'm not prepared to talk about that because I don't go to therapy, so I don't know what's in my psyche right now. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that scene was great. So, um, yeah, overall, um, like I said, really, really dug Little Women. I, I liked it quite a bit. Um, I was surprised. Oh, and you know what? Here's the thing. I didn't mention at all. I didn't mention Emma Watson's character. Um, sadly, that's because Emma Watson, great, great person, great actress, I'm sure. Um, she's She wasn't a highlight of this movie for me. Um, and not in any disrespectful way. It's just, you know, you you're sitting up there with Miss Ronan, who's great. Florence Plo. Florence Pugh, who's great. Also, side note for Florence, um, the whole time I was thinking, every time she popped up on screen, I was thinking two things. I was thinking, number one, you're, you are you are doing so great in this movie. I will never in my entire life watch Midsummer, no matter how great you are and no matter how much of a stan I ever become of you. I was like, I can never watch Midsummer. And just every time she popped up, I was like, because my little brother told me the whole plot of Midsummer one time, and I was like, 
I'm never watching that. I'm never watching that. So every time I see her, I think about the shit that she went through in that movie. I'm like, fuck. That seems fucking horrible. Um, so yeah, that. And I was also thinking every time she popped up on screen, how do you say her last name? And I think I've settled on Pew. Like every time she popped up, I'm like, oh, it's Florence Pew, 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 Pew. And I just ha- go through that cycle in like for 15 seconds every time she popped up. Um, so yeah, I thought she was great. Um, Beth didn't get many scenes, but you know, I thought she held her own. Um, Emma Watson held her own too. Emma Watson didn't get too much as far as like, you know, she she's like a side character in the story. Um, but Laura Dern, like I said, kicked ass. Timothy kicked ass. Uh, Sir Saro C. Ronan kicked ass. Um, I even like Mr. Uh, what's his name? Mr. Lawrence was even really good. He, he didn't get that much either, but I thought Mr. Lawrence stood out. Aunt March, Aunt March, uh, played by Meryl Streep. I know Meryl Streep's a historic actor, you know, living legend. I feel like she didn't get that much to do here. She played a fairly stereotypical role, and even then, she wasn't in the film much. So, you know, it is what it is. She, she, I can say that she was just mid in this movie because I know she was Max in plenty of other films. So, um, I'm sure that that's you know water off the duck's back or whatever you say. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's how I feel about the movie. Little Women, uh, another solid. Uh, I was going to say attempt, but attempt kind of comes off like she didn't hit, but she definitely hit. Uh, Another solid Greta Gerwig flick. Um, What other movies did she make? Oh, okay. She made other movies that wasn't Lady Bird. I'm just, I'm just sleep. Okay. Yeah, I had to look up her IMDb to see what's a poppin'. Um, Oh, but she's only directed four movies, including Lady Bird. The first of which was in 2008. Oh, oh, there's a Barbie movie she's directing. I forgot about that. Yeah, I'm fucking lit about that. Let's go. Hell fucking yes. I can't wait to see what she does with a fucking Barbie movie. That sounds wild. But yeah, anyway, we're getting off topic now. We're well past 30 minutes. So um, hopefully you guys enjoyed that review. I will be, you know, here and there I'll have reviews. Um, I don't want to have a consistent basis for these. This is just pretty much whenever I feel like it. But it's likely going to be for music, movies, TV, stuff that isn't games. Um, All my gaming related stuff I want to keep on the VGU.TV side of the internet. So that's where you'll be seeing that content. And um, you'll be seeing stuff on that YouTube channel as well. Um, And so, yeah, that's all I got to say about Little Woman. Hopefully you guys, um, if you didn't enjoy what I had to say, hopefully you enjoyed the control gameplay that you've been watching. Or, you know, whatever other gameplay this might be. I'm planning on it being control. But, you know, we'll see how life treats me (laughs) the next few days. Um, So without further ado, this has been Emmett Watkins Jr., also known as DJ161. You can follow me on Twitter at DJ161. Uh, Link will be in the description of this video. And I will see y'all in the next thing. And as I always say, keep it real, keep it trill. Bye-bye.